It's easy to fall for the Thousand Islands in a Mazda <laughs> MX-5. I'm Steph. I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. Hi, sorry, I'm all up in your face today. You'll understand why in a second. We are here in the beautiful Thousand Islands region of Ontario where the leaves are changing and the colors are beautiful and mm -hmm. we're enjoying it all in the 2023 Mazda MX-5. But, 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 it's an automatic. Right. It's our first automatic <laughs> MX-5 ever. It is for me. Yeah, I don't. It's been a long time since I've driven an automatic MX-5. I don't think I've ever. Anyway, the reason why it's an automatic is I want it to be different this year. And I'm like, well, why not? Because you sign out an MX-5 every year, right? Every year. And you know what? I just, I don't want to use my left foot. Yeah. And also, what's interesting about this review is that it's our first multi-country review. Yes, but don't spoil it. I won't. Yes. We could be anywhere. Keep we... watching. You're going to see why. What he means by that. Might be Brazil. <laughs> Might be New Zealand. Or if you understand geography, it probably isn't <laughs> any of those things. We'll get to it. Oh. Here we are in the MX-5. Not anything new particularly about this car, but I mean, who's going to say no to taking an awesome little roadster on a great road trip like this? Same two-liter four-cylinder engine. Yep. 181 Horus, 151 pound-feet of torque, six-speed automatic or six-speed manual. You have the Mazda MX-5 things that you live with when you choose this car, right? Like for example, we had bottles of water in here and then went to get coffees and we were all, okay, what do we do with these bottles of water? Now we need the cup holders for the coffees, which by the way, the cup holders are right back here or they're up here. Or they're either in your knees or in your elbows or whatever. But they're removable and it works. And it works well. And these are just MX-5 things. There's 130 liters of cargo space. Yeah which managed to fit our things, but we chose this on purpose. You have to pack creatively. Yeah, no. we, we put everything in soft backpacks and you know, whatever. Yeah. You, you know you're making those compromises if you're choosing this car because what you get in exchange is just like- Oh, it's fun and it's great. Nearly $45,000 worth of fun is the price here in Canada for this GT fully loaded. Now that we've driven the automatic for a while, which one are you choosing? The automatic or the manual if you're getting your own? Uh, it's such a tough question. It really is. Because I own a manual car. I'm 45, been driving manual since I was 16. Mm. It's going away, so I want to hang on to it. But just the ease of driving this in traffic, yeah. in Toronto, on the 401, in any kind of urban, heavily populated areas, the automatic is so well put together. Mm -hmm. And 51% of me would go with the manual. Yeah. But that's it. The automatic is, again, it's, I don't want to say it's more fun to drive. It's an easier drive. That's a really good way to put it. I would have to turn in my, my car enthusiast card, I feel like, if I were actually to buy one of these with an automatic, since I can drive manual and I love driving manual. But yeah, it's it's nice to not have to think about it and, and know, do right? it sometimes in that stop and go traffic, which is why manual transmission is going away. So just before we get going on the Thousand Island side of the video, we're gonna open the roof and here's one hand. Here's the other and it's out of frame. Yep. So you just push forward, pull down, windows get down to touch. And here comes the carbocitis. Mm. Anyway, here comes the peculiar part. So you can see my hand here. There it is. And you just... Give it a thump. I think it was like 90% of my arm muscles. Yeah, and we're ready to go. Or like 5% for a regular person. <laughs> All right. Business in the front, party in the back. Now the roof is open. Oh we're going to tell you about everything we've been doing here in the awesome. Thousand Islands. And before we do, we have to let you know the, the car portion is not a paid partnership, but the travel portion of our trip here with Thousand Islands Tourism is a paid partnership. That's our obligation to you to let you know that. 
We spent the first part of our weekend here getting to know the, the town of Gananoque. And Gananoque on the Canadian side is considered the gateway to the Thousand Islands. And for those who may not be familiar with the region, there are actually more than a thousand islands here, 1,864 to be precise, mm -hmm. many of which are protected by Thousand Islands National Park, which is a national park, part of the Parks Canada system here. And there are several mainland portions in addition to islands that are protected as part of this park. One of those, we went for a hike at Landon Bay. This is the most popular hike in the park for the precise reason that there's a short trail that you can take 15 or 20 minutes depending on your pace. You should go 20. Yeah. There's no rush. There's no rush. The view's gonna be there. And right. if you're like me and you kind of like the slow route, mm -hmm. then there's a bit of an incline. Like there's some, I don't know, maybe two or three sections where it's stairs and it's up a hill completely doable it's rated as a moderate trail mm -hmm. mostly because a lot of it's uphill yeah when you get there your reward is this amazing view mm. over Landon Bay and with us being here toward the end of September it's just gorgeous with the colors changing in the trees it's a beautiful beautiful part of the province to be in at any time of year but especially at this time of year when you can really take in those colors up from that lookout at the top of the trail Another popular place here in Gananoque is the Thousand Islands Playhouse, which is based right on the water, and they have a constant rotation of shows that the company is putting through throughout the year. We've been to a few of these over the years, and it's always a great time. It just so happens that the Gananoque Inn is right around the corner from the Playhouse, and so we had a bite to eat at Musky Jake's inside the Gananoque Inn. Just a very casual, fun, hubby place. Really good food. Now, if you're coming into the Thousand Islands region, especially if it's your first time, don't miss the Thousand Islands helicopter tours. This is the best way to really get a feel for just how expansive these, this chain of islands is down the middle of the St. Lawrence River. We took the 20-minute tour that goes over from Gananoque across the Admiralty Islands and then actually crosses the air border and takes you around Bolt Castle. You can do a tour, a circle around it, and we'll tell you a little bit more about Bolt Castle later on because there's a great history there as well. But as for the helicopter tour, this really is one of the essential experiences here on the Canadian side based in Gananoque. If you really want to get a feel for the islands and, and the scenery, it's, you can't miss it. Another essential experience here in the Thousand Islands is a boat tour, and there are several that leave from different ports on this side of the river. One leaves from Kingston, another from Gananoque. We took one from the village of Rockport, and this one is interesting and efficient because you can, within an hour, go past most of the favorite, the most desirable islands to see some features, like the one that's by legend said to be the shortest international bridge in the world it's not it's not but I they like to looked say it up it. it is because you can't have bridges to cross right anyway um <laughs> it's a technicality it's not but they say this but it's still pretty cool it's a nice cute little bridge it's got a canadian flag it's got an american flag um it's worth the 15 minute drive from actual downtown gananoque mm -hmm. like any boat there's different levels to it and here's your pro tip if you take the one hour ride find yourself a spot on the left-hand side of the boat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's port or starboard. I'm not very good with my I think it's port. sea terms, mm -hmm. um, but that's where you'll see the best view of Bold Castle. That's where you'll get the best view of the 
international, non-international bridge. Nothing's wrong with the right side. You still get some good view of the islands, and there's a history kind of sprinkled throughout through the loudspeaker. And we had it in English, French, and a couple of other languages. German and Japanese, I think we figured out. Definitely uh, jump on that for a different view of uh, Thousand Islands. Mm -hmm. And that's just a sample of what you can do in Gananoque. There's so much more to do. You can walk around and check out the shops. There's the Gananoque Brewing Company on the main strip. Lots mm. more restaurants. We, we like Laverne's. We like the Purple House Cafe mm. for uh, wood. Well, you had wood fired pizza. I had a really great salad, actually. Which is weird because mm. not a lot of people say that. But no, it was some, a really great salad, throw, honestly. Throw some steak on that? Yeah, exactly. Well, throw some steak on almost anything yeah, if true. you are a meat eater. Yeah, for sure. And Confederation Park is a really neat sculpture garden. Oh, it's a waterfall. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. You can yeah. walk around and get some pictures and really, really cool and unique things. And mm -hmm. just walking around the village overall, like there's no bad views. And, Grab wow. an ice cream, go down by the water. Mm. There's a really nice park down there. To recharge between adventures, we stayed at the Comfort Inn and Suites in the Thousand Islands Harbor District. The rooms are clean. The service is extremely friendly. It's a warm, welcoming place. There's an indoor pool if you're so interested and the beds so, so, so comfortable, would absolutely stay there again. Next door to the Comfort Inn is Riva Restaurant, and it's a fine dining establishment that's got a grand dining room, a couple of patios, and just a nice warm, welcoming atmosphere. There's an extensive wine list. The menu is contrasted by being simple, yet has something for nearly everybody. There are gluten-free options as well. The service is top-notch, and just, it's a wonderful place to share a meal, whether it's with a loved one, friends, or by yourself. Look, it's my big face on the side of the camera because our little MX-5 won't let us put it right there where we're used to. So we're back with the international portion. It turns out you can actually drive in a complete circle from Kingston, Ontario, through Gananoque, across the Thousand Islands Bridge, across upstate New York, along the river, and mm -hmm. then back across again at Wolf Island to get back to Kingston. You can't do this all the time, and we'll explain why in a minute, but much of the summer you can do this and, and into the fall and it's a lot of fun. We started from Gananoque through the activities that we've shared with you already and continued toward the U.S. across the Thousand Islands Bridge. On your way you first cross a bridge onto Hill Island which is a Canadian island and there's a small toll to get there which makes it a great time if you're going across anyway to visit the Thousand Islands Tower. The Thousand Islands Tower has been where it is for more than 50 years and it's a really quick ride to the top 40 seconds up the elevator and once you get there, there are three levels for you to choose from. Two of them are open air and you get fantastic views over the river. So good. Yeah, and it's relatively affordable for to get those kind of views from that height. And as you turn left out from the tower, you're immediately crossing the border from Canada into the United States. And as you cross the border, you land on Wellesley Island, which is where you can travel to the Bolt Yacht Club and access the Bolt Castle, which is on Hart Island an American island, and it's got to be the most famous landmark anywhere in the Thousand Islands. The shortest verse that I can give you is Mr. Bolt, who was extremely wealthy, decided to build this massive castle for his wife. Unfortunately, she passed away before it was completed. All work stopped on it. Uh, it changed hands a couple of times, and now it is slowly being restored. It's a great tourist attraction. Just take the ferry. Not really a ferry, just a, a boat ride? It's a shuttle. A they shuttle. called it a boat shuttle, yeah. From their Bolt Island Yacht Club to the Bolt Island itself, and I think we spent an hour and a half. Now, the shuttles go back on 15s and 45s past the hour, mm. so I'm gonna time that out, so don't show up at, you know, 2.20 and go, oh no, I missed it, because I'm telling you, for your heads up, it's 15 and 45 past the hour. But if you do happen to arrive in between, there's stuff to look at. There's some, oh, there's of, so much. some of George Bolt's boat, boat collection. That's a tongue twister. George yeah. Bolt's boat collection. And some of the rooms there have original furniture as well because Mr. Bolt, George Bolt, also owned the Yacht Club and several other properties on Wellesley Island. He was like Doing well incredibly wealthy. Very interesting to check out and absolutely iconic of the Gilded Era that shows through in a lot of the properties in the Thousand Islands region. The highlight of our visit, and I would say this is possibly the best kept secret in the Thousand Islands, 
was our boat tour with the mm. with Captain Gary at the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton. So knowledgeable, so friendly. It's a replica of a 1935 boat. It's as comfortable as whatever your favorite SUV is mm. in the luxury world. So there's Gary up front, we managed to sit in the middle, which is closer to the front, it's in front of the engine bay, and then two other guests were at the very, very rear. And it's a, it's a small tour in that respect. It's very... It's intimate, but it's not, because we couldn't talk to the people behind us, mm. because, well, there's an engine covered in between, but we got all sorts of information from Gary and Whoever your captain is, you'll get a bunch of information out of them. It's about an hour long, and there's some fast bits, there's some slow bits, there's some shallows, and it's just, it's, go do it. After the tour, we stopped in for some coffee from the very friendly folks at Lyric Coffee Company in Village, and we also stopped in at the Clayton Popcorn Company to see what flavors they had. They have some regulars, some seasonal ones, and they, or I haven't tried them yet, but they look delicious. And then the final detail to complete the loop is the ferry from Cape Vincent. Not one ferry. Two ferries, one from Cape Vincent and a mm. second one on the other end of Wolf Island. But the one at Cape Vincent is the important detail here because they don't operate every day of the year. It's a seasonal ferry and it's a family run operation, which is very interesting for a one with, that involves a border crossing. Yeah. So you'll want to check out their Facebook page. That's where they post their updates about when they're going to be operating. If they're not operating, it's just a quick 45 minute drive from Cape Vincent back to the Thousand Islands Bridge. So cash only, mm -hmm. 25 bucks to get your car across. Check and the Facebook page because it might change next year. That's true, said. yes. And so you get on there and then you just land on the other side 10 minutes later and next thing you know, you're back in Canada. And to complete the loop, you drive across Wolf Island, take one more ferry to land in Kingston, and there you are. You've done the complete circle of the international loop of the Thousand Islands. And that last ferry ride is 20-ish minutes? It's a little longer, yeah. And the first ferry, I believe you said it could fit 10 or 11 cars. Mm -hmm. On the second ferry, it is a lot more. Um, they've got, I think, four lanes, so I'm guessing 40, 50 cars. Mm -hmm. So we hope this has inspired you to come out and check it out and visit the Thousand Islands region and see all the wonderful things there are to do out here. If you do, bring a fun car and let us know what you drive and what you do and what you explore. And tell us what you think. Please leave us a comment and question or find us on social media. You can see us on all the major platforms. And thanks so much for watching.